you ever open up your laptop to code and end up watching YouTube tutorials for two hours without writing a single line? Or worse, you start building an app, get halfway through, then never finish it? Now it's just sitting in your GitHub next to the other 12 unfinished projects. Let's be real. This is the moment when most people burn out and give up. Not because they're not smart, but because they never learned how to finish. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I start and finish apps that actually make money using real tools, real strategies, and real examples. Stop trying to invent the next billion dollar startup. Instead, copy something that's already working. Example, I copied Calm when I was building my mental health journaling app. It had a timer, breathing animations, and soundscapes. I didn't pitch it, I didn't validate it, I just built it. The idea was proven, I just made it my own. And uh, so we built out an app and it had all the features. And I'll just show you the website here uh, called GitHub. Basically, we started out as a mental health company during COVID. There was this thing going around called the COVID blues. And uh, he kind of like figured, you know, why don't we make a journaling app or we can, and we'll have like this video chatting with a doctor and it would be good. You think you're the first person to build a budgeting app? Nope, that doesn't matter. You need a budget, then look at Mint, then look at Monarch, same core idea, different executions. There's room for all of them. My student, Booty built a simple budgeting tool using the same model which helped him get noticed by NatWest. Don't say I'm building a SaaS product. Say I'm building the login page today. So through building this app, there's something that clicked in my mind. Every app needs authentication, chat, profile management. These are like three very important things that almost every app does. And then it has some kind of secret sauce, like whether it be journaling or video chatting or quizzes or whatever it is. In the end, you're always gonna need authentication, profile management, most likely 90% of the time chat. Something clicked in my mind, just make those things really well and then you can kind of get to the good parts really easy and uh, have fun. When I was building a coffee app for my previous company, I created an app to help them sell expensive coffee machines as well as foster a community. It didn't happen overnight. I broke down my days into features. On day one, I set up Firebase Authentication. Win. On day two, I set up React Native. Win. On day three, I init the backend server. On day 10, I started the front end. I wrote the login screen and the signup screen. On day 11, I created create user endpoint and user models. On day 12, I implemented React Navigation. I just kept working like this from the smallest and most basic of tasks, things I already knew how to build really well and kept adding on to it. Small wins that I can check off daily. That's it. Break it down, stack wins. Here's what my student used to build FizzMe, a workout tracker. Front end, Next.js, deployment, Vercel, AuthnDB, Supabase, Payments, Stripe, hosting, free tier, until paying users came in. No reinventing, no custom server setup. He knows it works because he's used it many times. Is it the best stack in the world? No, but he learned it, stuck to it. Now he knows how to use it really well. Pick one stack and reuse it over and over again. It just works. I am keeping a public GitHub streak going while building Let's Social, the current app I am working. Please check out the devlogs I'm uploading weekly. Even when I was uh, a, a tech lead and I was hiring people, when people would share their GitHub, the one thing I'd always look at is their uh, GitHub activity. So if you have no uh, activity uh, on your GitHub, it kind of shows that um, maybe you are, not, you are not coding as much or something like that. Even if I only fix one bug, I push code every day. Eventually, people start DMing me saying, hey, I saw your streak, what are you working on? Now there's pressure, good pressure. I posted a weekly update for Let's Social on YouTube. There's a bunch of these code fluencers, right? And maybe I could call myself one now, but um, where's their own app, dude? So maybe uh, something different that uh, we can do at Let Fail is create an app and actually try to start a startup. And uh, we can hire people. We have a great community. And it's just uh, fun. It's, it's like, I don't think it's really for monetary gain as in for now to gather people. And then I think once the people come, I think things could, could take off. Having an audience helps to keep pressure to let you be accountable for your actions. But even if I didn't have an audience, I would have recorded it and put myself out there. Jocelyn, 
my second mentee ever. She built a music playlist app and posted her progress and learnings on the coding accountability channel in our free community Discord. Result, 200 signups in one weekend. This is the app. It's uh, you can t- called Harmony Hive. It's uh, it's using some cool stuff like use memo and stuff. But um, you can log in, and this person does not have any playlists yet. So then uh, you go to create playlist. Maybe you can add an image. There, nice photo of me. Um, this will get uploaded into storage. Uh, let's go playlist um, playlist beast of burden and you can add this and it gets added into your songs and then uh, another another song maybe um uh, hello uh, by Adele it's a great song all right so you can just add these and um the playlist and the playlist gets created successfully and then you can look over here in the dashboard and my playlist will be here so it gives you the uh, YouTube links and uh, you can li- listen and then you can share it and it'll get um, and then it'll uh, it'll uh, give you a link and then it'll um, and you can see that it's the playlist here it's pretty cool um, doesn't matter how ugly your MVP is, share it. People want to see your process. People appreciate hard work. After I launched my mental health journaling app, I ordered sushi, watched a bunch of K-pop dramas, and went to bed at 9.30. Was the app perfect? Not even close, but it was live. It had a Stripe payment link, it was working. You gotta celebrate those wins or you'll burn out. I plugged Posthog into the same mental health journaling app. I noticed most users were bouncing right after sign up. Why? Because they didn't know what to do next. So I added a start your first journal onboarding pop up. Retention jumped 40% the next week. Having data to look at, whether it's data that shows success or data that shows your failures, will help you understand what kind of actions you need to take. No guesswork, just data. When my team and I worked on the coffee app, I took inspiration from what already worked for already existing apps. You think I made a whole marketing funnel from scratch? Nope. In Korea, neighbor blogging is huge. There is a certain format you can market your business or your product. I copied what has already worked for many others and we were able to gather hundreds of thousands of users. Free marketing, 30 minutes of work. I used to think I had to code 12 hours a day to make money, wrong. Now I work in two hour sprints, then I take a walk. Sometimes I don't even code at all, just write content or test features. Burnout doesn't come from doing too much. It comes from never finishing. Finishing an app isn't about being a genius. It's about having a system. Copy what works, keep the scope small, track your progress, ship before you're ready. Every app I mentioned in this video, zero funding and made money. If I can do it, you can too. Subscribe and let's go build something real.